This little flower pot is also a little home, setting the stage for the breathtaking emergence of life and the inevitable vicissitudes of tragedy and glory. Happy endings are subjective, and what this story's ending is to you will be yours to decide. For me, this story continues to influence my present and my future. As for the story's ending, it is only what it is. I suppose you could say that my grandfather's fall, his breaking of bones and near-death experience triggered new opportunities for life and for death. After his surgery, a friend sent him some flowers. I decided to hang the arrangement in front of the house. Our dehumidifier, filling daily here in Virginia's subtropical climate, provided water for the plants on the regular. One day I watered the pot and a little Carolina wren popped out. It was a little upset but not completely offended. Apparently a mating pair had begun making a nest. So each day I would water the pot and keep their green and yellow fortress secure trying not to dampen their progress in construction. And soon there were eggs that soon hatched into nestlings. Six eggs turned into only four nestlings, and it would be likely not all of these would survive. Some would say these are ugly little things, looking like some mutant Woody the Woodpecker mixed with Mr. T from the A-Team. And I can't say I disagree. Blind, helpless, begging loudly for food from their parents while simultaneously letting every other nearby creature know where they are. Fortunately for these noisy younglings, their home is rather strategic. This old cat has no chance to satiate his predatory, visceral desires. Even a snake would have trouble getting access to this hanging perch. The parent wrens work day in and day out without rest constantly minding the nestlings, offering food, providing warmth, cleaning the fecal matter from the nest to keep things tidy. Their teamwork and dedication is quite admirable. They remind me of the other parents of nestlings and fledglings of other birds that caught my curious eye this Virginian summer. A young blue jay, a pileated woodpecker on her nest, a father cardinal feeding his young and many times with the awe of witnessing a strange loneliness also overcomes me as I wonder if I will ever have young of my own. As a man of science, I have to look at the situation objectively. For all my years, I've deterred the success of my seed with contraceptives, but for what choice to delay? I'm aging. I found a gray hair in my beard just the other day. Time is no longer my ally, even if I embrace some qualities of youth. While observing the nestlings and the emergence of flourishing life all around me, troubling questions burden me. Am I becoming less adequate as I age for a female that I would also find to be worthy? Are the flaws in my genes too dangerous to pass along? Or are the strengths in my genes too great not to pass along? Is it selfish to bring more humans into an overcrowded world? The questions are endless and I don't find proper answers. While seeing these younglings grow, the thoughts spin and twirl in my mind, worrying me of my future as I also worry of theirs. Life is indubitably a vicious process where suffering, loss, and death are always guaranteed, while the joys, successes, and those scattered pleasantries are merely perks that the lucky and worthy individuals find along the way. But the chances for those joys and successes are why we keep on living. The nights and days pass, and still the Wren parents work without pause providing for their young, now resembling creatures much more soothing on the eyes. But what was four now is only three? Cannibalism, a predator, a wandering mistake? That mystery remains. Very soon they will need to leave this nest and learn to fly and fend for themselves. One morning I left the house early to count arthropods for a scientific survey, and upon my return I noticed the flowers removed from the pot and heard no little birdies begging for food. It was oddly quiet at that time, and I knew some calamity had transpired. Not long later I came back outside to investigate. It was noisy. A crow was flying off with what appeared to be a fledgling in its grasp. The nest had been invaded by feathered marauders. And now I heard the parents wailing and sounding their alarms. I looked for survivors, but I couldn't find a single fledgling. I observed for a while. No fledgling could be found. 
From six eggs, there were now zero younglings. Nothing left from all that parental effort. My heart dropped, feeling a portion of the agony the Wren parents must have felt over the loss of their offspring. I pondered what the Wren parents would do now. That was until I heard a familiar chirping. The sounds of hope. One fledgling survived the onslaught from the crows. It was tucked away underneath the bush. The parents were working to carefully guide the fledgling to a more secure location. A breath of relief overcame me, and I even violated my non-interference policy by intimidating the rest of the lingering crows, shooing them from the area and giving the wrens a chance to get their last remaining offspring to a safe, secure spot. Their last little survivor. But this little one was not out of the clear. Now it was more vulnerable than ever. On the ground it had many predators. Cats, foxes, snakes other birds. This last fledging, like its falling siblings, would be another tasty meal for these predators, creatures that also have young mouths to feed. This little family had embarked upon the next part of its difficult journey, and I can't say what is of this young wren's future, for I do not know. After this afternoon, I never saw it again. Somehow the lives of these wrens became intertwined with mine, causing me much introspection and emotional investment. I gained a greater respect for their parental dedication as well as a stronger desire to one day have young of my own. And these existences will always persist all around us, these endless opportunities for life and death, for suffering and satisfaction, for successes and failures. Life is what it is. Ultimately, the most able, willing, and lucky find a way.